Meena. I'm a diamond and gemology graduate. In today's video, we're going to be talking about lab-grown diamonds. So what exactly are lab-grown diamonds? This is a very buzzing topic, a buzzing sensation that's been going around lately, right? Like everybody's talking about it. So what exactly does this mean, lab-grown diamonds? As the word simply means, the term simply means the diamonds are grown inside lab and that is why they're called as lab-grown diamonds. These are exactly similar and same as to earth mine diamonds. They have the same chemical properties, the same physical properties, the same optical properties and even exhibit the same fire scintillation and sparkle as earth mine diamonds. So how are they different? The only difference is that they're grown inside a lab above the earth with human control whereas earth mine diamonds are completely grown from the nature under the ground below the earth. That is the only difference between earth mine diamonds and lab grown diamonds. Let's find out more about lab grown diamonds. To understand about lab grown diamonds, we have to majorly understand about two major topics which is the HPHT and CVD. So what does this HPHT and CVD mean? Seems like fancy new words, right? But what are they? These are just two different methods in which the diamonds can be grown inside a lab. As the first one goes, HPHT, high pressure, high temperature diamonds. It is one of the primary methods used to grow diamonds in a lab. This method includes high pressure and high temperature to grow the diamonds. The pressure ranges from 5 to 6 GPA and the temperatures of 1400 to 1600 degrees Celsius to form diamonds. So what is the process in which this happens? Let's understand a little bit about the process of the HPHD. In the first step, the diamond seed is placed in a specifically designed press. The growth chamber or this particular press in which the diamond seed is placed under is heated to 1300 to 1600 degrees Celsius with pressure above 870,000 pounds per square inch. Because this method majorly involves only high pressure and high temperature, that is why the temperature is also extremely high and so is the pressure. The molten metal dissolves the high purity carbon source after which the carbon atoms precipitate on a small diamond seed crystal and the diamonds begin to grow. Once the diamonds are completely grown, the lab grown crystal diamond is taken out and then cut and polished by the diamond cutter. Understand it in a very small crisp, HPHT diamond growth takes place in a small capsule inside the apparatus capable of generating very high pressure. Within the capsule, a carbon starting material such as graphite dissolves in a molten flux consisting of metals such as iron, nickel or cobalt which lowers the temperature and pressure needed for the diamond growth. The carbon material then migrates through the flux towards the cooler diamond seed and crystallizes on it to form diamond crystals. Crystallization occurs over a period of several days to weeks to grow one or several crystals at the same time. Seems like a very complicated process, right? But in simple manner, it is just basically putting a small diamond seed inside a particular capsule and giving it extreme amount of pressure and extreme amount of, you know, uh, heat and then basically growing it with the help of carbon and other particles like graphite, cobalt and nickel. So how exactly is it different from mined stones? While mine diamonds, earth mine diamond crystals tend to form as octahedrons in the left side picture if you can see, they form as octahedron shaped format. But rather HPHT diamond crystals typically have a cubic format because they are not grown completely under the ground, they are grown inside a lab. The format is completely different. Also since the HPHT diamonds are completely grown inside a lab, the growth pattern also changes a lot compared to a mine diamond. In a mine diamond, you would be able to see internal growth patterns very visibly and very strongly. Rather than a HPHD, it might not be that clear. And that is a major way you can easily identify, you can differentiate between a HPHD stone and a mine stone. But will this be really visible through the naked eye? Not at all, not really. It won't even be visible to a grader when he is looking at a stone. Because once a stone is cut and polished, you will not be able to find this at all. This, you will only be able to find the growth line and the growth pattern right when it is in the raw format, before cutting and before polishing. Once the stone is cut, polished and set inside a particular jewelry, even a grader will not be able to find the difference at all by grading a stone. The only way you can find the difference from a mined stone and a HPHD stone is through high-end machines and technologies which check and detect whether if it is a mined stone or a HPHD stone. So are there any particular colors that we can find in HPHD diamonds? Because in mine diamonds, we can find different colors, right? Ranging from red, blue, green, like very various different fancy colors that we've seen. But can we see colors in HPHD stones? Well, certainly. The addition of boron in the growth process results in blue crystals. So in case during the growth process, we add more of boron, then we can get blue lab grown diamonds. Other colors such as pink, red, green can also be produced. Post growth, this will not happen during the growth process, the pink, red and green. It can happen post growth through methods as radiation 
and heating. As we saw in the previous videos, we have seen that irradiation and heating can give colors, fancy colors and enhance colors, right? And through this process, we can bring in these fancy color to the HPHT diamond stone. We then move on to the CVD diamonds. This method, which is the chemical vapor deposition, CVD, involves filling a vacuum chamber with carbon containing gas that crystallizes on a diamond seed. Earlier in the 1980s, the CVD process of creating diamonds was fully established and realized. Some of the big names, the first creators of the CVD diamonds are W.G. Everson, Derag Huin, J.C. Angus. These three people are the first creators of CVD diamonds in the year 1980s, dating back around 40 years ago. According to an article by Robert Linares, Integrated Diamond Technologies LLC on the GIA, Gemological Institute of America website, the earliest CVD growth chambers enabled growth on only one seed at a time. Although reactor seed capacity is closely guarded and not many people know it because it's a very huge secret, it is highly reported that it is capable of growing around 50 or more seeds simultaneously right now. And the number is expected to increase even more. Guys, you have to clearly note that in the starting when CVD was found, when the chemical vapor deposition method of growing lab-grown diamonds was found, it was only possible to grow one seed at a time. Now, it is possible to grow 50 seeds at a time simultaneously. Do you know how much percent growth that is? Not 100%, not 200%, but literally 4,900% growth. And that is extremely huge. And it is expected to grow even more in the future. This basically just shows us how growing and how fast evolving the world is in this industry. We now move on to the process of CVD diamonds. We have seen what CVD diamonds are and the history of CVD diamonds, right? It's very important for us to understand the process of CVD diamonds to really judge if HPHD, high pressure, high technology diamonds, is that better compared to CVD or is CVD better? Let's understand the process. The diamond seed crystals are placed in a diamond growth chamber in step one. This chamber is then filled with carbon containing gas and is heated about 900 to 1200 degrees Celsius. A microwave beam causes carbon to precipitate out of the plasma cloud and deposit onto the seed crystal. The diamonds are removed every few days to have the top surface polished to remove any non-diamond carbon before putting back into grow. One important thing that we have to note in here is that in the previous method, which is a HPHD, the diamond was not removed in between. But in here, in CVD, we remove the diamond every few days to remove the top surface polish to remove any kind of non-diamond carbon particles. And it is very, very important to do this. Every batch of diamonds, every batch of CVD diamonds may require several stop and start cycles and the entire growth process can take up to three or four weeks. After all of this process is done, the diamonds are completely ready, which is in the raw format and ready for cutting and polishing to be set on a stone. After all these procedures are done, after 3-4 long weeks, the diamond crystals grow out in the natural raw format, after which it is being cut and then polished cleanly for setting onto a diamond jewellery. To simply summarize the entire process, there is a small seed crystal which is being placed in the diamond growth chamber and this chamber gets filled with carbon containing gas which is then heated to great amount of high temperature and after which the carbon precipitate towards this seed and then the diamond grows. But one small thing that we have to notice here is that the stones are taken out every few days to remove the non-carbon particles which is not diamond and then put it back again. So the start and stop cycle keep repeating over and over again throughout the 3-4 week time period. Now many of you might ask me this question, is CVD better or is HPHT better? Because both of them look very similar and how does it make any difference? Because end of the day both of them are grown in the lab, right? So which is better and which is not better or is it both the exact same? Well, let's answer that. So what are the different additions compared to HPHT that we find in CVD? The first addition we get in CVD is that the addition of gases in the process can reduce any impurity in the diamond. See, diamonds have impurities, right? They're generally formed with impurities. And when they have more impurities, it has very poor clarity grade. When diamonds have poor clarity grade, we all know that it won't have a good amount of price and it will not sell for a higher price. So it is very important for a diamond to have very less impurity and inclusion so it can sell for a higher price. And through CVD process, the diamonds will have very less impurity because the addition of gases in this process is much more compared to a HPHT process. The second point is that the ability to grow diamond over large areas on various substrates is much larger compared to HPHD. HPHD majorly works on particular capsules, whereas CVD works in a more chamber base, in a more large base stock size. The third point is that CVD process does not require high pressure like the HPHD process as the growth typically occurs under the pressure category area of around 27 kPa, whereas that is not the same case with HPHD because it is 
completely based on high pressure and high temperature technology. And finally, the fourth and very huge advantage is that CVD process receives a type 2A certificate, which is the highest quality of certificate for diamonds. But whereas HPHT does not receive the exact same highest type 2A certificate. Let's do a small comparison between HPHT and CVD diamonds. Under HPHT, the color distribution is very uneven, whereas under CVD, the color distribution is completely even. The graining patterns are completely visible under HPHT, whereas there is no graining patterns in CVD. In both HPHT and CVD, we can find unusual fluorescence colors and color patterns of fluorescence. There is occasional phosphorescence in both HPHT and CVD diamonds. When we talk about inclusions, we can find metallic flux inclusions in the HPHT diamonds, HPHT high pressure, high temperature grown diamonds. We will be able to find metallic flux incl inclusions and these inclusions are basically metal inclusions and when there is this kind of inclusion inside a diamond stone, it will be really attracted towards a magnet. Not very easily, but then if there is an extremely strong magnet, then the diamond stone will be attracted towards it. Whereas under the CVD in inclusions, we only find occasional dark pinpoints and that is also easily removed during the cutting process majorly and this happens very very rarely. There are no strain patterns under the HPHT technology whereas there are banded strain patterns in the CVD technology. And under both of the HPHT and CVD diamond growing system, we will be able to inscribe on the girdle of the diamond. And that is the word for today's video guys. If you found the video informative and valuable, please do like, share and subscribe. And if you have any comments or any doubts or any information that you want to share with me, please do drop them in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.